not need you. <laughs> you may not have realized that, but every detail that you are, God made. I mean, every detail. That means you're upside and you're downside. God created happiness and sadness. It wasn't that God created happiness and the opposite happened, called sadness. Or it wasn't that God created joy and then cursed the world with depression. No. God created all of these emotions that we feel, that we experience, and that we go through in our life. God created them. The reality of experiencing them is something that challenges us as human beings, but as spiritual beings, it teaches us discipline because we yield ourselves to those things that glorify God when we're a spiritual being. But there are times when we're just us, you know, fleshy, more fleshy than spiritual, more emotional than content, more <laughs> of the world than of heaven. And God knows that because God knows you. <laughs> God knows me. You see, God gives me little things that I can kind of like put my finger on. Little things I can touch and feel. Little things that bring me joy in the morning. Now, for me, my little things that encourage me might be a little different than yours. I know most of you are thinking, well, yeah, that's because you get into the Bible and, you know, you, you put on praise music or you pray or you talk to God or all these things. And I'm like, well, yeah, I do that, but I take God with me in the things that I enjoy doing. One of those things I like doing is I like popcorn. Really, seriously, I like popcorn. Matter of fact, I like popcorn so much, I like to go to the theater and get, you know, like, <coughs> I tell the guy, look, you see how skinny I am? I want to leave here fat. So, you better butter that sucker down where it's soggy. Because if it ain't soggy popcorn, I don't want it. And matter of fact, you better give me so much salt in it that I could raise my blood pressure 20 points. So, that guy works on it, you know, and he pours in the butter, you know, and stirs it around and shakes it, you know, puts in some salt, you know, and then stirs it around shakes it. But I really love when I can go to those theaters that you put on your own butter. Because then what I do is I take, you know, the popcorn out, put it in a container, just put the butter in, you know. And sure enough, I put it in my lap and, ooh, sometimes it seeps through the bottom. But you know, man, I can almost taste that popcorn. You know, the salt and the, the butter, you know, or margarine or whatever it is they use. Ooh, just gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Sometimes, that's the way that God encourages me. You know, I go to the theater. And I see some movie that, you know, I've been waiting to see because I really can't afford to go to the movies all the time. You know, maybe you can and maybe you don't enjoy it as much as I do, but my wife and I, we really like to go for the popcorn. Now, the movies are nice, you know. She has her, I like to say, Lori story movies, you know. Kind of those cutesy movies, you know, that women like. And I have my action adventure, you know. But in between, we kind of balance out to where we enjoy the popcorn, no matter what movie we see. <laughs> so we really like to go to theaters that are cheap so we can buy the popcorn. And we don't go to the theater unless we can buy the popcorn. So there's lots of times we don't go to the movies, but... That's one of the ways that God encourages me. Now, I like being depressed sometimes because it kind of bums me out. You know, my, my wife really doesn't know quite how to deal with me when I'm down and out because I know how to deal with me. I kind of like dive into it, whole hog or nothing. I enjoy being down because I come back out of it and I come around to God. 
I take my emotions with me and share them with God in full circle of all my emotions, whether happy or sad or angry or mad. You know, and I remember yesterday, ooh, I got really ticked. You know, somebody decided they were going to attack Billy Graham. Knockout punch. You see, there's always somebody that's going to point a finger, always going to wag the tongue, always going to complain or shame or try to bring defame to somebody that God has used in their life. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be Billy Graham or Rick Warren or Greg Laurie or Chuck Smith or even me. They're going to slash and crash and try to attack accuse the brethren because that's kind of the nature of some people they just don't feel good unless they can stomp on somebody throughout the day so because on the internet you get to play more than you get to think you know a lot of people play at what they wouldn't get away with in person so they attack personalities because that's an easy target you know and so I got mad God, you get them. You dash their children upon the stones. <coughs> and their little ones upon the rocks. People forget that David said something like that. David actually said he wanted children annihilated. And this is a man after God's own heart. You may want to redefine what you think God means by David is a man after God's own heart. God doesn't necessarily want to smash and dash and crash and kill children. But, hey, you know, Dad expressed the feelings that he had at the time. And that's where we're at each day. We have a choice to deal with our feelings in a godly way, admitting we have them, or denying them in some way and saying, no, they're not there when they really scratch the surface or just beneath. Now, God will bring you to a place of even keel where things kind of like might make you mad but Proverbs teaches us let not the sun go down upon your wrath and be angry and sin not so there is a way to be mad and not sin I think I'm working on it <laughs> but God wants us to be honest with him he wants us to take all of our life and offer it up to him as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is our reasonable service if you kind of think about it because after all Jesus died so it's only reasonable that he would ask of us our life that he might live his life through us that reasonable to you? seems that way to me for yourself. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within? Fear not, for I shall yet praise him. Why art thou cast down, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. Psalm 42, 5. God gave you your emotions, so it doesn't work to ignore them completely. You make a big mistake if you refuse to meet any of your emotional needs. If you were tired, you need rest. Hey, check it out, take a nap. If you were stressed, you need some fun to detox and de-stress and declassify your important priorities. If you need encouragement, spend time with someone who knows how to build you up. You know, that special friend you got. No, I don't mean the rabbit. <laughs> I don't mean the imaginary friend. I mean someone who always seems to know just the right thing to say. The person you like to spend time with. Might be your wife. Might be your husband. Might be a friend. Might be a neighbor. Might be a women's study. Might be a man's. Might be Jesus. Don't ignore your emotional needs in the name of Christianity. Christianity does have body, soul, and spirit in mind. You are a tripartite being. You have three parts to your needs every single day. 
You are a whole person, body, soul, and spirit. See 1 Thessalonians 5.23. God will show you how to be strong in all areas of your life. When you become born again, you don't just become dead to the flesh and alive to the spirit, but you become new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. You have a new spiritual body also that wars against your flesh. But you have a spiritual spirit and you have a spiritual soul. So you have kind of like this new nature that's kind of warring against the old nature and it kind of like mixes itself together in some ways. That until you learn how to pray or talk to God about it, some of your emotions just might get pretty confusing. Don't deny it. Just learn to take to God what you're feeling and be honest and truthful about it. And you may find that God will be honest and truthful with you and take them unto himself and hold you in the bosom of his heart. Then you'll see what it's like to have a perfect peace and to enjoy the presence of his spirit.